PvP versus PvE. Titan Developer Hired. And Ark to be free next week. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to your regular Ark community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So the community crunch dropped last night, talking about something, an ARK Steam sale. No EVO event, nothing more, apart from some fan art, and I've got to talk about it. They included me and my NVIDIA Ansel shot of an Andrew Sarkis fighting Alpha Fenry Solver that I hope you enjoyed watching in my video last week. But yes, ARK Ultimate Survivor Edition is on sale. A nice cheeky 56% off bringing the total to the Ultimate Survivor Edition, including all of the story maps at 26 pence and 63 pence and a different currency for people over in places that aren't the UK. On top of that, though, there is a sale for a pack of Snail Games games. If you wanted to get involved, tuck in to some of those, including Last Oasis, Atlas and Pixar for the princely sum of $24.87. A nice cheeky 48% off. If you don't own any of these yet, or you know somebody that doesn't own any of these yet, get involved. What a nice little selection for you. Might tuck into it myself, seeing I haven't got Pixar yet. And it is worth mentioning the arc in the bundle is just the base game, not the Ultimate Survivor Edition that you get with this deal. But Epic Games players out there, people who prefer to play Ark on the Epic Games platform, you're gonna get a nice cheeky deal if you are interested at all in the slightest. Next week on September the 22nd, Ark Survival Evolved will be free until September the 29th for you to play, download and enjoy all of the Ark base game that you want. And if you want to tell anyone about that, now's the time. It's coming up soon. Once you've downloaded it, you've got it for infinite time. Worth noting though, for the Epic Games version, mods aren't available, I don't believe, still. Hopefully, that's going to come at some point. If I'm wrong though, comment below, please let me know, but I've not heard any information on mods being supported for the Epic's platform. But still, ARC free, free ARC. Who can complain if you don't own it yet? So, Tia Aura, you might know Tia, she's been around for a long time in the ARC scene, a lot longer than I have, and does run ARC content of her own. In fact, two different channels, one for us English-speaking people and one for her native tongue of Deutsch, but does run a website as well, and last night revealed the results of a long study of PvP versus PvE figures. What's more popular? Who's playing what? And I must say, this was an excellent and almost surprising read. Tia went in depth and provided a complete background as to how she came up with these numbers, why these numbers matter, and how it could potentially affect ARC 2. Whilst studies started out to see that PvP and PvE official servers are pretty level, though this was during a server wipe for beginner servers and ARC pack, Tia went into more depth about actually what servers are popular if you compare them against the circulation of clustered servers, how many players are you going to run into in those clusters? And it turns out Beginner and Arc Puck are actually the more popular servers if you break it down to just the cluster. But the big one that was surprising to see, what's the difference between official players and all players? So that's players who are playing on unofficial or single player. Whilst these studies aren't completely accurate, I think some guesswork was created with this and it is surrounding Steam only, not console. I believe that to be right. It's still very surprising to see the massive change between the two. Official is almost barely noticeable, but it makes sense nowadays. Whilst yes, everybody that got into Ark originally probably did join official servers, as time has gone on, more and more people are creating their own offering, adapting, evolving ARC as it were, to be a different playstyle that's accustomed to them and how they want to play ARC. And perhaps why ARC 2 is looking to be more of a sandbox experience and less survival. More so it demonstrates, and it's been told to us by the developers, that single player is 
the majority of ARC players out there. Whilst, yes, I have a passion for both PvP and PvE, I think you know that by now if you watch my channel. I really do want to encourage both styles of play. I think there's room for both. Tia goes on to say how PvP affects PvE with all the changes, balances and restructuring it does as time evolves and how the developers could possibly look at this when they address arc 2 and how the two different modes are going to interact and i completely agree that pve needs a different set of minds looking at it and how to balance that for pve and not be so impacted by all of the changes that are needed for pvp more to the point there could be a possibility it's going to be split anyway during the Twitch stream a few weeks ago, the big dogs, Jesse and Jeremy, were talking about arenas that were purpose made for PvP fights. Whether Arc 2 is going to look to go down that road and actually split off PvP players and confine them to these arenas, I don't know. And I do think restricting PvP players to specific game modes and not enjoying the entire experience from a PvP mindset would be a good idea, but I do agree that PvP shouldn't be affecting PvE players so much. What was quite alarming really was off the back of the order releasing created by Nakatas, who I've of course championed plenty of times in the past. Well, PvP players seem to blame Nakatas for all of the issues with the map. If you don't know, Nakatas didn't make it for official. Yes, he has said he's got no interest in PvP and the map wasn't built for PvP and Wildcard taking that to official perhaps should have spent more time to address how they could have balanced that for official whilst they dropped in these teleport functions to create some balance. There's still a lot of complaints from players out there but the point being don't blame Nakatas for this. Nakatas made the map simply that and Wildcard bought it off him to use. That's And that's it. So if there's any balance issues that you still have any concerns, gripes you still have with the map in particular, go to Wildcard, ask them, talk to them. Those are the people you need to talk to, not the Cartus. And it's a wonder if single player is so much more popular than servers, is this going to affect Arc 2? Are they going to be looking at more of a solo campaign, which I keep thinking could be a possibility with the sequel? The devs have alluded that Vin and his daughter in the trailers will be the protagonist and co-protagonist. Whether that means we're going to see some God of War style solo campaign mode that blends with multiplayer is all to be questioned, pondered, wondered until we get more information about this. And I hope we may see much more of this and what it entails when the Extra Life 24 hour stream that they do every year happens again in early November. So Cody Go Alex, you know him, we've talked about him plenty of times in the past. The creator of Mod Map Titan, which we played once upon a time and has been in development ever since then, sadly had to announce that Titan map support would cease to exist no more because Cody Go Alex is going to work on some new projects. Alluding to others thinking what exactly were those projects? Well, a Twitter user by the name of Roberto, who I assume is good friends with Alex, put out a tweet congratulating Alex that he actually is going to be a developer for Arc 2. Big times and certainly well deserved. Codigo Alex hasn't shedded any light on this as of yet, but a lot of people have liked tweets congratulating him that I would assume would mean this is definitely 100% a thing and fully deserved. Codigo Alex has broken new boundaries on what can be done with Ark in its current state. Of course, the Titan map, everything he's done for Arcadia, even created a whole mod for us, the Monarchy, with this Crown Vault mod, which we still love to use and are hoping to continue developing this as a new offering for PvP. So a big shout out to Codigo Alex and can't wait to see what you're going to do with Arc 2. And finally, Nerd Out, I am sure you will have heard of them if you know Arc. Throughout the years, Nerd Out have written and performed songs for each map as time has gone by and recently released a new song for Fjorda with some excellent 
cinematics directed by Jakari and a few of the team actually got in touch with me to tell me exactly how some of this was filmed. It was really insightful but the song alone is a great performance and just yet a big shout out to Nerd Out, a big fan of yours. It was great to see this hope to see what you're going to do next which is probably going to be art two and i'll leave a link to this in the description as well as tears post and channel and i hope you've enjoyed this news today if you did comment below let me know my name is ross clark don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always uh, peace out uh.